I am back with some more mommy talk. And today, we're gonna be talking about my crazy, scary labor story with my son, Miles. This one was a little bit more complicated than my first one. My first one was just crazy, it was just fun, it was a lot going on. This one was actually scary and my life was at jeopardy and the life of my son was at jeopardy. So, really excited to talk about this and get, possibly give some people some information about some stuff that they may, maybe have never heard of but I sure enough didn't know about before I had my son and that I was just grateful to the father that he spared my life and that I had that unction to go to the hospital. So, this is my very scary labor story with about my son, Miles. Got my husband with me again here today to be Thanks. help us talking about this. And don't forget to subscribe before we get started. Click that button right there. And don't forget to hit that bell so that you get all your updates about every time I post. Okay? Let's okay. First, we're going to talk about the day before I went into labor. I was actually went in to the Africans and got my braids, my micros done because I was preparing. He was, well, he was six, I was six weeks away from my due date. So I was preparing um, to go into labor within the next six weeks. So I was going to get my braids done. And while I was there, um, I felt something pop while I was sitting in the chair. They, they like snatched up one of the hair, like one of my braids. And I was like, oh, and I felt something pop. And I remember thinking in my head like, oh, I hope that that, Nothing went wrong. I hope nothing happened because half my hair was out. And I was like, I can't be ghetto going into the hospital where I have my hair out. So please don't let me go into labor. But I remember that happened. And I came home and I told my husband, I told my mother-in-law that. And we kind of laughed about it and then moved on. But the next day, um, he had got off work early for whatever reason. He got off work early and he came home. And we, uh, we had family worship with our kids every night. And we were having family worship. And I remember I, was, I started feeling... Um, contractions and I now during your pregnancy you're gonna have what they call Braxton Hicks Braxton Hicks are the practice contractions that your body just sends you every so often to kind of get you prepped but um they kind of started off light like that so I was thinking oh just a Braxton Hicks whatever you know so I didn't I was I remember he was in he was talking and he was like you're okay you're okay and I was like yeah I'm okay you know okay kind of having feeling a Braxton Hicks or whatever so after family worship we got Carson and we went to go get something to eat at Chick-fil-a yes we went to go get something to eat and I remember he sat in the back with Carson for whatever reason I don't know so they were watching yes. something and he sat in the back so I was driving and I drove to Chick-fil-a and I remember I got out they were watching some movie in the car so they stayed in the car I just ran inside to go get the food and I was I standing in line I'm pregnant wife getting the food but it's okay mm -hmm. it's a, I, I didn't know I was in labor but <laughs> Um, I went inside and I was standing there and it was taking all day and I was like I'm about to fall on this floor because these contractions are getting these breakfast well I thought they were breakfast these breakfast is getting stronger and stronger and I was like I'm about to fall on this floor they don't come on so I finally gave my food and I got to the car and I was like babe something's not right this is it's starting to feel strong it's getting they're getting stronger so I remember we, I drove I was driving home and I remember like my foot was like shaking because they were getting so strong and I, he was like you want me you want me to dri drive and i was like no i'm okay whatever so we finally got home and i think you put carson in the bath mm -hmm. and i was somewhere i was sitting in his rocking chair in his room and i was sitting there and i was just like okay lord what is going on so i called my friend hartrees hartrees jackson um follow her but i called my friend hartrees and she was pregnant at the time as well with me and i asked her i was like do you when you when you get braxton hicks do you ever feel um do they ever feel like almost like real contractions? She was like, no, maybe you overdid it a little bit today. So um, just get in the bed, put your feet up, just relax, you know, and, and get some rest and maybe you'll feel better in the morning. So I was like, okay, or whatever. So while I was talking to her, I had another one and that one was like scary, painful. And I remember I just like almost fell on the floor and she was like, Destiny, something's not right. So I said, okay, let me call my mom. I have to call my mom. So I called my mom and I was like, mommy, I'm not feeling right. I'm feeling some, some I'm feeling some contractions and they're getting stronger and I'm getting scared. She said, get to the hospital now. Why are you even talking to me? Get to the hospital. So Car he had just got Carson out the bath and I was like, get him dressed. We got to go. So he put through his um, pajamas on. We got in the car and I called my mother-in-law because she lives like an exit up from our hospital, Vanderbilt. Um, and I was like, meet me at the hospital. Her and my brother-in-law meet me at the hospital. You got to come get Carson because I, I think I'm in labor. So I remember I was in the car and the contractions were just coming. They were coming, they were coming. And then they just stopped. And I was, we were driving. I was like, okay, well, 
maybe it was just some practice contractions because right. they I'm not having any anymore so I called my brother-in-law back and was like hey okay don't worry about it we're, we're gonna go back home I think I think they've I think they've stopped we're okay and by the way by the time I got we're okay out of my mouth one hit so strong and I was like oh no meet me at the hospital now go me at the hospital so we darted down the freeway to the hospital at this point i'm crying because i don't know what's happening my son is looking at me like mommy what is wrong chris is concerned uh we get to the hospital we get um in the emergency room and finally the nurse comes down they check me in the nurse comes down and she's like do you need a wheelchair and i'm looking at her like duh yeah i need a wheelchair <laughs> um, i'm having a baby yeah i need a wheelchair so she ran and got me a wheelchair and i remember while she was running to get my wheelchair another one hit and i like bent over and i was like almost on the floor those contractions were hitting so strong so she finally got the wheelchair wheeled me up to whatever floor it is and they checked me and again even with Carson four centimeters dilated four <laughs> four centimeters dilated why I am dilating this early have no clue so uh, my mother-in-law took Carson they went to the house um, they checked me because I wanted to know could I push him out vaginally. That was the only thing I was concerned about is I don't I did not want to have to have a C-section. So they checked, they brought the uh, monitor in and did a ultrasound and made sure he was head down, which he was. And they said, yeah, we're going to be able to push him out vaginally. But the plan is to stop the labor. So we're going to get you up in the room. We're going to try to stop the labor. Okay. So they get me up to my room. I get in the bed and... Um, um, I think I sat there for like, what was it? An hour and a half, yeah, two hours. Yeah. And they didn't do nothing. Like nothing. I just sat there in pain, having contractions, crying. And I'm like, okay, I thought the process was, I thought the plan was to stop the labor. What are we doing to stop the labor? Right. Nothing. So at this part, at this point, I'm popping off. I'm snapping off. I'm, I'm going in on everybody. Like if my baby come out and something wrong, I'm going in. So them nurses got to move in. Them doctors got to move in. At this point, my mom got there. My sister got there. And um, it was just a lot of chaos. I'm, I think, I think my, I was still dilating at this point. I think I was like maybe six or seven um, at, on my dilation. And I was like, give me my epidural. So they brought the people in again. We had residents, which I requested not to have residents, but didn't know all this was going to be happening. Had residents, snapped off again, and was like, put this epidural in me. And they got that epidural in me. But something went, went wrong with my epidural. And when they put it in, I got really, really sick. I started vomiting, and um, I, I, I just got really weak. So I was laying there, and I almost, uh, my, my vision started blurring. And I told my mom, I don't, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I don't feel good. So all the doctors started coming in. And by this point, I completely blacked out. I don't even remember anything at this point. So he's going to have to take over this point from the point to when I came back to. So what happened? Uh, did, did they not give you another epidural? I don't I think another, so. I think another doctor came in. Like one of the main doctors came in, I think, fixed the epidural. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so during that time when she blacked out i was going crazy in my mind i was trying to keep it all together you know emotionally but in my mind i was just like lord i just hope you know nothing happens with the baby and with mm -hmm. my wife so that's what i was thinking about and then she was you know coming back and then kind of um you know consciousness coming in and out and so sometimes she'll come back and say little things here and there that didn't make too much sense to me mm -hmm. at all and then she'll kind of like go back to sleep or whatnot and then did you wake up yeah. when they came back? You well, know, as far as with the baby. Yeah. Well, what happened was when I came to, because they said that I lost consciousness. Right. And um, what happened when I finally came to, I woke up, my eyes opened, and they had all these lights in my face as if they were set up for me to push him out. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on. Like, they, it was blood all over my bed. It, right. They had lights all in my face. And I was like... What is going on? Like, I didn't even know what had happened. I came to and was like, what's going on? Well, did they tell you about the heartbeat? Like, no, that's okay, what I'm saying. So I hadn't heard that yet. That's so. thing, yeah, that's one thing they said before she came. Before she actually woke up, that's what they were telling us. That we had to check the baby's heartbeat. He's losing the heartbeat. So we need to hurry up and get the baby out. Jesus. Yes. So I came to and I'm like, what's going on? So at this point, I guess they had lost his heartbeat all together they couldn't find it so while i'm asking what's going on what's going on they're like 
We can't find, all I hear is, we can't find a heartbeat. We can't find a heartbeat. We got to get her in an emergency surgery. We got to get her in an emergency surgery. And they just start wheeling me out. And I was like, wait, 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 what's going on? Where's my husband? Can my husband come? And they're like, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. Can my mom come? No, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. And they like wheel me out. At this point, I am bawling, bawling. I don't know what's going on. Like, what happened? There's blood everywhere. All I'm hearing is they, they can't find no heartbeat. My husband can't come with me. My mama can't come with me. I'm by myself in this room. And they're cutting me open. I had to, I was rushed into emergency C-section. They put, I am claustrophobic to the 10th power. And they came in with this thing, put on my nose. I'm hyperventilating. It's just cr madness. It's craziness. And I don't know, I'm completely terrified and scared yeah. that my baby did not make it. So um, while we were, while I was in the emergency C-section, I'm crying and they're trying to put this oxygen on my, on my nose and I'm hyperventilating because I can't breathe and, and, and all. So um, they finally gave me, I think they gave me a shot to calm me down. And I just, I, I just remember just every, instantly just relaxing and I was still crying. And I, I remember hearing the doctor say, um, we got his heartbeat. And I just bawled, like I just bawled, like Jesus. Like, thank you, Lord, we got a heartbeat. So they cut me open. And by this time I looked to my left yes. and there was a door with like a little hole in it. And I saw this beautiful face and I said, <gasps> Please let him in here, please. And he had his little hair cap on and all his little scrubs and stuff. And he came in, he was crying, his little eyes was red, and I was crying. And um, they cut me open. I couldn't smell anything because I had the oxygen on my on my face, but he said it, it just smelled like burnt skin. Like yes, it just smelled because exactly they were cutting like. me open. So yes. cut me open, got him out, got him on the table. As you saw in the video, in the video package before we actually started, um, he wasn't getting any oxygen. What happened was, it is called placenta abruption. And that is when your placenta separates from your uterus um, and it the baby cuts off the baby's oxygen supply. So the baby's not getting any oxygen and it caused internal bleeding for me. So I was internally bleeding, which is why I blacked out um, because I had so much, I, I was bleeding internally didn't know it they didn't know it they didn't know that either and glory be to the to our father who was in heaven that he spared my life and that he spared my life and my son so when he came out they he had to be he was in a NICU yep. and um he had the tubes down his throat and all that I did not see that praise praise Jesus I did not see that he did he was able to see him yes. in that state and then um day by day he started meeting, and I'm not gonna cry, but day by day, he started meeting his milestones. They took the tube out of his throat. He was able to breathe on his own. They took um, the stuff out his nose. Yes. He was able to come out of the incubator and just be in a regular bed, like the Every baby. Day. He was still in the NICU, yep. but he wasn't in the little incubator um, bed. He was able to be just be in a regular crib. And um, I remember after I got out of surgery, they took me in my room. <laughs> the nurse said, I got in the bed. She was like, okay, so um, do you want to eat? And I said, no, I don't want to eat. Take me to my baby, girl. <laughs> Take me to my baby. I don't want to eat. I don't care about eating. Take me to my baby. And when I saw that little face, I just cried. And I just, I'm gracious to the father that he spared his life. Because yes. before I got discharged from the hospital, my the doctor who was actually in surgery came in my room and was like, do you? know what happened and I was like no and she kind of broke everything down for me and pretty much told me if I had not came in that night that I came in I would have died and my son would have died mm. and that just I'm just grateful for the Lord's grace on my life yes. and that he loved me enough and me loved me so much to he give loved me so to, much <laughs> to give me that sign to go to the hospital that something's not right go to the hospital so um one thing i will say for all of my moms out there if you have an unction about anything that something could possibly be not be going right if you're not sure about something something don't feel right go to the doctor do not self-diagnose yourself and say that oh i'm good no go in because you're you're risking your life and the life of your baby so um that is my labor story. I want to say one thing too. Even in that time when um, he was in the incubator, such things like that, I went up there every day and just prayed with him every single day. Yes. So even if you have that same situ same situation, or if that would happen, pray for your child every day mm -hmm. and trust the Lord. And every day, Miles made progress every single day. Every I got day. to touch him every day and pray for him. 
and every day he made progress. And they say that usually babies of that, um, when they come that early, six weeks, they're usually in the NICU for like two, three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. And I had him September 7th, which was on a Wednesday, and he came home that Monday. That I Monday. was discharged that Saturday, so I only had to be without him for two days. Really, really, wow. yeah, just yeah. one day, all day Sunday, because Monday morning we went and picked him up. So, did. so prayer works it is it, it is it is a tool that we that we should not neglect pray for your children and the lord is he is faithful to answer yes, answer all of our prayers so all right mommies that was my labor story that was a lot it was a lot just talking about it again i could get emotional just talking about it again because the lord truly truly loved me enough to spare my life and i am so i'm forever grateful when i look at him now I am forever grateful for his life. So, thank my husband again thank for you, being here and talking about this with me. And I thank him for just being a strong man even through that time. It was nothing like having that rock behind you knowing because I couldn't get up, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do a lot. So he was there praying. He was there uh, in the NICU praying with him, feeding him, making sure that everything was going okay in the NICU. Nobody was mistreating him. That was him. And ladies, get you a strong husband. Cause you, cause it's, in these times you're gonna need it. You're gonna need it. Okay. So don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe, 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 and please leave me com comments down in the comment section below, asking any questions. Okay. I'm more than happy to answer anything and just leave me comments. And you can also personal message me as well if you have anything personal that you want to discuss with me. That my personal email is in the description box below as well. Okay. So thank you so much for watching again. You are a great mom, yeah. and that your children appreciate everything that you do. And ladies, do not forget that a woman who fears the Lord, her children will rise up and call her blessed. You will have a good one.